Grandpa has no control over her grandfather at all. There, right. yeah, Luke. Oh. <laughs> uh, your life, this is uh, Mr. Anthony Terry. Oh, here, a smile. Smile, you're on Good camera. Morning. camera. <laughs> He's going to show us around and where the Mount Airy and Eastern Railroad actually went. We're now current, currently in Boys Rest. It is still there. Yeah, but was it used as a depot also, or did they have a separate deal? They had, uh, my understanding was, I don't know where the bridge is now, was like a uh, dock or a yeah, siding that they would stop and unload. Uh, or to merchandise for the store. Right? I guess at that time we're talking not a lot of uh, people in this area that had all the mobile homes. So uh, all the people in the community there, and maybe even as far up as here, were uh, that was where they got uh, the things that they weren't raising on the farm. You know, I guess the sugar, their coffee. Uh, He would, uh, I'm assuming, order this material and from various suppliers, and it would come in on the train and be unloaded there at, uh, at his location. Where was the lumber mill at that field? Was it near the store? That I do not know. I do not know about the lumber mill. Could have possibly been over where at the uh, Salmonville Road area is now, or maybe closer to the store, or so had a clue at all. That, that I have never heard mentioned. So, uh, I don't know if, uh, if that area could be where it's the Salmonville Walk or, or not. Now, the only reference that I have to, uh, I guess, actually the lumber, and I knew that they were hauling the timber out of Kilber Valley. Uh, Mr. Kilber, I guess, was the man in charge of that. And uh, just above my house at, uh, at the crossroads there, at 614, crossing, they had a siding, and they would park loads of lumber there. And some of the young men in the community decided one day it might be an exciting idea to uh, loosen the scotch or the brakes or whatever they, however they secured uh, these uh, railroad cars. And uh, they turned them loose there at the crossroads and uh, they unloaded by miles. <laughs> they actually uh, left the track. Mm -hmm. He says that he actually had found the bed where he had been took for the standard gauge up to Sulphur Spring, just below where the old hotel was. And you know, like the cut came up, it was at a lower level than the uh, Marigate wall. And said he found where it is. You know, he found traces from Mount Airy up to that point, and that it was, in fact, started up to there. That's basically, I guess, the Virginia line sounds like, or close, uh, close to it. Yeah, and I guess my reason for that question is yeah. I have found these along the side of the uh, uh, These two particular sizes were found uh, probably two miles from here in a, in a bar. That train came through uh, just above uh, the bottom. Uh, 
And uh, I do know that all that I ever found at my old home place were the largest. I maybe in my lifetime <laughs> found something. It was a small one, but it was always the larger spot. I don't know if that is any significance as to uh, a narrow gauge or uh, uh, standard gauge or whatever. Depends on the uh, size of the track, the, the weight of the track, so many miles per foot. Uh, uh, some of the narrow gauge track was as small as 30 to 45 pounds per foot. Mm -hmm. Standard gauge track would be anything from 50 to 60.
they talked about here in the train come and blow the whistle when they got to the river down there, and I guess that was to uh, advise Mr. Bateman that uh, his merchandise was on the way or whatever, and uh, they would uh, go, on from, go on from there. What was the name of your mother? Uh, it was Irene, Irene Epperson. And she lived in the Bateman store area. Right. right. Uh, the old home place and everything is still there. Uh, and the road that goes beside the Bateman store is low water bridge, lane, I think. It goes on down, crosses the river, and a big white house over there. That's where she lives. Is that the house all the way out the end of that road? Yeah. Who lives there now? Is she still uh, lives there? No. My uncle, her brother's with her, and her family lives there. And did the railroad go up through the hollow there beside that house? No, it did not. There's a power line that goes right up in the area beside the house. The railroad did not go that way. No. Did the railroad basically follow the river then? Once it, uh, once it left from this area and went down uh, <coughs> what we call Fall Creek, that's what it's always been referred to as. I don't think it's a sign that the bridge or anything down there where it crosses. But uh, where it turned from this area, it went down Fall Creek to the river and made the left turn uh, through Meadowfield and on up uh, the river. And I don't ever have high high up the valley that it went. You know if anybody has any photos of the train at Meadowfield? Sure do not. Uh, a gentleman that uh, you might be contact with be Jerry Lowe. It's very possible that uh, Mr. Bateman was his grandfather. So, <laughs> Do you recall any buildings in Meadowfield related to the railroad? Do not. Do not. I, I only remember back about 60 years. <laughs> well, uh, before that, well, I, I, I was thinking maybe some of the uh, old buildings might still have been around and maybe somebody tore them down later, you know. No. Other I, uses or whatever. I am assuming that when. Uh, the train went away. They pretty much didn't have any use for this stuff, and it was probably torn down. I may be wrong, but I think that's, that's what sort of my thinking of it. So you're not sure about the uh, why for turning the locomotive at Kibler either? No, the exact location. No. Uh, do you know where the lumber yard was at Kibler, where they loaded the train? No. I guess, basically, uh, my knowledge would be what comes through by Meadowfield. Yeah, and where I was raised. Okay. And from there back to... Uh, Three, four, let's see. The first thing I guess... 40 to 46, and I like four. What's now, uh, Three, four, let's see. Four, five, six, seven, eight. The G obscured is uh, down at the bottom here. Well, just before you get to the Gibbs uh, uh, Stewart home place, we'll be there. I didn't say. You don't know the location of the Decoder Carter to be No. I guess that may have been uh, there at Crossroads somewhere. Uh, probably. You told me about the uh, cars being the bottom uh, down there that the uh, gentleman was named Dan Smith owns, and it's just a little quarter bond here. So, uh, okay. You need air in your arm. Come back, Anthony, could you talk a little louder? <laughs> oh, my goodness. So, right when we come up top of this hill, over here to the right in this bottom is going to be where Anthony lives. And the, Clark's Creek will be right behind the house over here, and the railroad will be paralleling us almost directly then. And that will be 
my house here to the right and uh, probably 50 or so feet behind the house there is where the uh, train track laid and went on up the Fall Creek and we'll see a little bit further up here where uh, it meets with this road. The gentleman that lives here, James Clement, tells that uh, his father and some of his friends were paid like 50 cents a day to take up the track it was through this property here and I'm assuming they were working for the uh, railroad whether it was uh, the original ones or as you were saying earlier where they were trying to I guess re reorganize it but here to our right somewhere in I don't know which side of the creek here but uh, uh, this is coming up towards the headwaters of uh, Fall Creek. And to the best of my knowledge, somewhere in this area, it made a turn to the right, kind of running in line with uh, these power poles here. Could and the power poles possibly be on the old right of way? Very well could. There might have been, you think maybe it was a siding right in here? Probably, probably so, because somewhere in this area, the Clements lived in this area, and uh, I think it was told that Clement boys were the one that turned the train loose. But somewhere 50, 75 feet from where we we're riding to our left is the old train bed, I'm thinking kind of along the edge of those uh, woods a little above, and it keeps getting further away from the road. We get down here, stop, and I'll show you where there's a, uh, they had a crossing for this creek down here. Just in a, can you see kind of an indention in the field? Pull off right here, Kenny. Pull off right here. Pull off right to your right. Yeah. Spot to kind of see an indention in the field up there. That tree right on. Yeah, it'd be right. probably right. 100 close. foot above mm -hmm. the last tree you see. Okay. And it's kind right. of an indention in the field. Okay. And well, it's across the road right here, right? I think it crossed somewhere right in here, didn't it, Ann? And then went down Fall Creek, or right up here and went down Fall Creek. Did it cross okay. where, now, where are, are we? Yeah, we're about right, right here. here. That's what I'm going to do. Come down and do this turn. Okay. That, uh, on your top over here, probably that cut right there is what you're looking at right yeah, up there. About this right here. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if it comes here. The train bed right there. And this is Fall Street. Fall Street. Not Fall Street. Excuse me, Tom. <laughs> Y'all got me so confused here, I don't even know that I live here. <laughs> That may not be something you want documented about that. But we're walking down through here, um, like we were talking earlier, probably somewhere four or five hundred feet down through here is where the train came around the hillside and crossed the river to what uh, Y'all referring to as Metafield. This is where they used to. Oh, it's on a limb. Trespassing here, but let's just walk. Uh, the rail followed this area here and then across the Dan River. As, as we're panning. What we're looking at here is the area where Fall Creek enters Dan River and the train that we're discussing came down Fall Creek from uh, Carter's Mill. About a uh, hundred feet to our right and probably 75 feet in elevation we have the original 
train bed. This is where the train actually ran. It's making a turn here. We'll go on out about uh, a quarter of a mile to where it crosses Dan River at Meadowfield. Uh, this, uh, this area here is uh, the cabin and all belongs to a, to a neighbor, fine gentleman, Jerry Love. This is probably one of the better indications along the side of the Fall Creek here that uh, the train actually ran in this area. The indention that you can probably see in the bank there, that's where the uh, where the train would be would be running when it uh, when it was coming through this area. We're now slightly above the falls that you saw. We're now on the old roadbed. We're looking southwest <laughs> toward Carter's Mill. <laughs> this area, we are gaining elevation to get above the falls that you've seen in some earlier footage. Uh, we have a couple of the gentlemen investigating a little further ahead here. Uh, maybe that large black bear that was talked about earlier uh, will not cross at this time. And uh, uh, Kenny, did I tell you about that bear we saw over here last week? <laughs> he wants a documentary about a little comedy. We're about 75 feet above where we were at near the cabin. You're not familiar with that. It looks it looks like a wheelbarrow. The grade going up toward Carter's Mill, apparently. We're approximating about three, four. A little bit of imagination. You can probably see the train turning, uh, going across the river in this area and making a left turn to go up Dan River, which would actually put the track on over closer to the actual store building. So you think it went behind the store? No, here. it went on this side of the store building. Oh, okay. yeah. But not to the back of it, it just went. Went somewhere on this side, somewhere in this uh, in this bottom that's in corn now, I would say that the... So that this is probably the track right here. Is it straight yeah, across? you see the way the soil is raised a little bit there. I'm, I'm guessing that that's where the I'll, uh, I'll call Jerry Love. Maybe uh, the fall we come all out. All morning long. <laughs> well, they took up most of the track, didn't they? Yeah, it's they all, took up the, the old bed it's on is still there if you look for it. I certainly wish they hadn't uh, never done away with the railroads. But uh, Kenny's got some questions he wants to ask you, and uh, feel free to add to it if you know what I mean. <laughs> Uh, do you know much about the railroad when it was at Kipper, or do you know mostly uh, in this area where you live, or Meadowfield? Or that? I just know about where we, from from the state line, well, all the way from Mount Air, mm -hmm. about where it ran, and uh, on up to the road that cuts across from the top of the mountain up there by Holly Tree Road. Holly Tree Road's up here where Gene Reynolds used to be, right? Is that Holly Tree Road? Yeah, up there at, uh, where you Bucket Lives. Yeah, down Is Holly Tree Road close to Carter's Mill area, or is that? Holly Tree Road's where we came through there on the 
like I was thinking about the, the racetrack. That's on Clark's okay. Creek. That's okay. where it goes up Clark's right. Creek. Okay. Uh, do you remember when they made an effort to standard gauge the line at Mount Airy in 1924? I just heard them talking about it. I don't know. You don't know if they uh, graded the uh, extension up, say, where you live and made I, it not, they right away no, wider or anything? They didn't do no grading there. Uh -huh. They may have somewhere closer by to Mount Airy. Yeah, according to newspaper articles in the Mount Airy paper in 1924, they brought in a locomotive and about 20 cars and changed the track right there at the junction area and made plans to go, you know, on up toward Kibble with the standard gauge, but they were going to have to change the roadbed right because an air gauge could go a lot of places. Of course, standard gauge couldn't. Yeah. Well, right there. And uh, they, the so I don't know how far, you know, from the junction area they actually went. Mm. I don't believe it ever left my eye. Okay. With the widening it out. All right. Uh, do you? What can you tell us about the train that went through your property there, where your daddy's store and all was? You mentioned the water tank and uh, going on the train from your house, I believe it was, or the store to the water tank. Can you tell us anything else about the train that you remember there? Well, I can. I can remember the setting something. Haystack fire, and sparks, and uh, I can remember to set the woods afire, and there was talking about somebody, the railroad people had hired somebody, I won't call them names, to put out these fires, and, and they thought that some of them maybe set them on purpose in order for them to draw a little pay, you know. Mm -hmm. Uh, were there any gentlemen that worked on the railroad that lived around close to where you lived at the time? To, uh, that you can remember the names of the people? Yes, I did. He uh, can't remember. Wasn't it a hill? Uh, was the hill? Well, man, uh, Epperson worked on it. Hayes Epperson worked. Hayes Epperson. Hayes Epperson, Hayes Epperson worked on it. Grandma Epperson's grandfather. He worked on the railroad, and he uh, he wore a, a tooth. He'd take off his one good shoe and put on a bad shoe. And I asked him why he done it. He said he cut his foot, he wouldn't cut his new shoe. <laughs> <laughs> and then there was a man killed, 1916. Johnny yeah. Pell. Johnny he, Pell. He was he was on a, a little, they had a little old pump car. Yeah, a little hand car. And his nephew, Mary De Pell, was on it and tried to scare him and threw him off and burst his head. Because we went with so he's buried at Hunter's Chapel mm -hmm. Cemetery? Yeah. July. Now, July of 1916. That's right. Johnny Pell. Mm -hmm. Let's see, whose Pell was he? Was he Joseph Pell's? Joseph Pell's daddy. Yeah, I've heard Joseph's you Joseph's daddy. Is there any other names of people that you can remember worked on the railroad? Well, I remember the conductor that was on there. Right, what was his name? Mercer Patterson. Was Mercer Patterson? Maybe R C E R. Mercer Patterson. Yeah. Kitty, uh, she's got a better memory than you and me. <laughs> I can see that. I can see that. And, uh, he married Anna Mitchell. Married Anna Mitchell. Anna. Anna Mitchell. Yeah. Williams. Williams. Hey. Hey. Yeah. And he was, uh, Mr. Patterson was a conductor, right? He was a conductor. You remember any of the engineers or station agents no, or no. train crew, I mean track crew, worked on the track? No. Any names of those people? No, no. Did you ever uh, see the train? I guess I have. I rode it. You rode the train. Okay. <laughs> How many times did you ride the train? I don't know. My cousin would come up from North Carolina to Mount Air and we'd go home with him, ride the train. How far did you ride from that area? What location did you get off at? We rode down close to Dry Bridge. I remember standing on Dry Bridge and watching the trains go on. Where is Dry Bridge located at? On or Main was Street. On Main Street, Mount North Air. Main. Yeah. North Main Street. So you rode the uh, Dinky, yeah. Yeah, Dinky to the downtown area, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Could what? you tell us some of uh, like, what did the train look like to yeah. you as, let's say, in your youth? Yeah, what kind of cars did it have? Did it have passenger cars or 
caboose? Yeah, they had a caboose and they had a passenger car. 